in uh, for the morning se surgery session, along with, I would guess, half a dozen others um, in the same time slot. We all sat with our respective partners in the waiting area for pre-surgery scans and checks. While we were all sat around waiting, a lady came into the waiting area. She was clearly in a distressed state. She appeared disorientated and her eyes looked very, very painful. She was complaining to the staff about her discomfort and her inability to see clearly several weeks post-surgery. She was very angry. There were some very worried looks on the faces of some of the other waiting patients and my husband gave me a questioning look but I dismissed this and reassured him that should there be a problem it would be sorted quite easily with top-up surgery after all this is what I'd been assured at the consultation. <clears throat> I was not really put off totally and was, but was totally confident that my procedure would be 100% successful so convincing had the hard sell been. Why, oh why, didn't I just walk away at that very minute? The reason? I'd been sold the surgery as a guaranteed no-risk procedure. So why should I worry? This lady must have just been one in a million. Uh, but how wrong was I proved to be? Quite a bit later, I was told that I could go up to the surgery suite, uh, but after being led away from the waiting group and before actually going upstairs to, to the surgery suite, I was asked by a member of Optical Express staff to take a seat and read and sign the form on the clipboard I was given. This was the consent form, which I'd never seen before. Some sections were marked not applicable because they related to LASEC, which I was not having, um, and other sections which didn't apply for whatever other reason. <clears throat> I had never seen this form before and was quite taken aback with some of the, the complications they appeared to be describing. I was understandably in a nervous state and these complications had never been explained to me before. There wasn't a member of staff to ask questions of, so I presumed that Optical Express were just covering themselves <clears throat> for, for however eventuality, um, however unlikely. Um, I regarded it as a form, formality, just setting out the absolute worst case scenario. The first consultation painted um, a different picture entirely, and the consent, consent form said that it should be read in conjunction with that consultation um, as a process. <coughs> I was too nervous to properly take in everything on the consent form, so I signed it on the basis of what the counsellor had told me. I believe that the surgery J procedure is deliberately structured to minimise cancellations. The Optical Express consent form in my case, as I believe it has been changed since, <clears throat> consisted of four pages of small, compact print, quite difficult to read under any circumstances. Just to read uh, from the document, um, it says, please read the following pages carefully. <clears throat> on the day of treatment, your surgeon will discuss it with you and you will be asked to complete and sign it at the time. It is important that you bring this informed consent with you on the day of purchase. Sorry, on the day of procedure. Section 1 on informed consent goes on to say, It is our aim to fully inform you concerning the side effects, limitations and compli complications of laser eye surgery. <coughs> It is important to understand that any form of surgery has a certain degree of risk. This consent form, in combination with the information documents and explanations provided during your consultation process, is designed to ensure you can balance the risks and benefits of surgery and make an informed decision whether or not to proceed. If you have any questions regarding your treatment, you should ask your surgeon before signing this form. 
The purpose of this form is to document the information provided to you and your decision to proceed. I understand I have the right to change my mind at any time. Just to take each point at a time, it says, uh, please read carefully the following pages. However, it's a bit difficult to read a lengthy complex document when you are a bag of nerves. Secondly, your surgeon will discuss it with you and you will be asked to complete and sign it at the time. <clears throat> if you have any questions regarding your treatment, you should ask your surgeon before signing this form. <coughs> a bit difficult when you've been required to sign the form before even seeing the surgeon. It goes on to say it's important that you bring this informed consent with you on the day of your procedure. <coughs> a bit difficult to bring something with you if it is not or never has been in your possession. It also says the consent form in combination should be read in combination with the information documents and explanations provided during your consultation. By presenting the, uh, the consent form at this point in time, when your patient has no time or is not in a mental state to take the contents of the form, take in the contents of the form, the form actually loses its relevance and the patient is most likely to sign on the basis of the information given previously, including what he or she was told during the consultation. With reference to the, the, the wording, I understand I have the right to change my mind at any time, uh, we should add, that is on the understanding that I lose my money and Optical Express retain my three grand for doing nothing. I believe that the presentation of the consent form to a patient just minutes before surgery is totally contrary to, to the process of informed consent. If a patient is given sufficient time to read and digest and do further research on the contents of this form, it's quite likely that a good proportion will back down. <clears throat> of course, on the day of surgery, um, backing down at the last minute would be very costly in terms of financial loss. And beside this, by the time they have turned up on surgery day, most patients will be mentally fully committed. I most certainly was, but had I given been given the form previously to, to look through, I most certainly would have done a lot more research and I quite possibly would have backed down simply because of my pre-existing dry eyes. <clears throat> I also believe that isolating the patient before giving them the form is structured to minimise unhelpful discussion with other patients and the posing of awkward questions. Similarly, asking a patient to sign before even seeing the surgeon has a similar intent. I spent quite a lot of time upstairs in the surgery area and during this time I observed what I could only describe as a conveyor belt. The surgeon, to be, the surgeon appeared to be on a revolving door flitting from pre-surgery consultations um, to operations and then to post-surgery checks. When it came to my turn, just prior to surgery, I met the surgeon for the first time. It was immediately evident that my introduction to my surgeon was very time limited. However, I did bring up my concern about my dry eyes. He dismissed this as did my optometrist earlier, saying that it was not a problem at all. Although I believe it was my surgeon's duty, uh, duty to ensure that I had given informed consent for surgery, he did not even mention the consent form, let alone ask if I had any questions about it. He examined my eyes briefly and I felt quite rushed. I presume that the surgery was not remarkable in any way um, and I went home to sleep, looking forward to my 2020. Um, 
unfortunately that is not what I ended up with.